Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome. Thank you again for tuning in, watching or listening, doing it however you're doing it. As always, you can find us on the SoundCloud app, on podcast, on... I meant the podcast app of SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, that's a great start. Uh, you can find us on the internet. All-encompassing. Yeah. Everywhere out there. Also YouTube. We're literally everywhere yeah. on the internet. So. Anywhere you could be. Um, Honestly, though, we're most places. Yeah, I mean, we have our website. All these descriptions are down below. We have our website. We've got all the social yeah, media So when Will stuff. messes them up, um, he yeah, won't be lost. Just, we'll just look down there. <laughs> um, our website is, I guess you would say, our newest venture on the sort of internet. Yeah, you, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, say that. That's fine. We've got a few articles on there. Uh, we try and post... I try and post uh, semi regularly. I'm sorry. When Ooh, you lead a shots fired. When you lead a busy life. Um, we also, as you may have noticed, hopefully by our logo, which is like here, here ish. Um, we've rebranded a little bit. Uh, we've got. Uh, we made a new logo. We made a new logo. But we didn't rebrand anything. We updated our logo. Um, <laughs> yeah, rebranding, rebranding might be a little much, but we did redo our logo. And yeah, we do Yu-Gi-Oh now, so get ready for that. Get. Yeah. Trap Card Excited. Tuesdays. Trap Card Tuesdays. <laughs> Woo! Uh, guys, uh, today we are going to kick off with our random card of the day. We're going to talk about Ixalan, uh, our yes. first impressions of Ixalan. Obviously, this is before we actually get to see the set and do things like that, oh. but um, play with the set, I should say. Uh, but we also have our question of the week and, uh, of course, our crack of packs. We also have a giveaway that is going on right now uh, that is available until Saturday. So, if you are wanting mm. to take part in that, just stay tuned until the end of the episode and you will find out how. Learn a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, so, kicking off, we got a random card of the day. Let's see what we get. Yes. It's going to be epic, right? Three, two, one. Wow, that is so much worse mm. than the card that was there before. Um, uh, but, I mean, it's, this is a good card. It is a good uh, card. Aki Colflinger. It is a Goblin Shaman. A 2-2 two, two for three, one colorless, two red, with first strike that says pay one red, Tap, attacking creatures, gain first strike until end of turn. Super good and limited. Yeah, that's that's exactly pretty much the only place you play it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for limited, awesome. Super good. I mean, this will be an all-star in a red aggro deck, obviously. Um, yeah. Giving no. all of your creatures first strike in a limited environment is mm. hugely, hugely powerful. What set is this? Uh, originally from Champions of Kamigawa. It was also pre reprinted in Elves vs. Goblins, which... By extension, in dual decks, and Thrology. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, original yeah. in Champions of Kamigawa, which was one of the coolest, like, flavor sets, I think. Um, yeah, it was pretty great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a solid card. Mm -hmm. Uncommon. So, mm -hmm. like, if you are opening in that sort of era, you're probably not going to get a bunch of these. So, you want to probably take them pretty early, I would say. I would take it. Um, I, I might take it first pick, depending. I mean, uh, depending on the pack, it's not a bad one to first pick. No, it's think. great. Giving everything first strike is That's phenomenal. Huge, In yeah. limited first strike, uh, it gives you so many outs. You feel so safe having a guy with mm. first strike out there. Absolutely. Uh, and the option to give everything first strike is crisp. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, I really, really like this one. Uh, I like it. For limited specifically, I don't yeah, think it goes in no, any constructed. You do not play it. No. Um, <laughs> It is. It's is sweet, though. Yeah. Uh, Pretty cool. Okay. I I am not. I'm upset not unhappy. About that. By the way, the card that was there before, as you guys know, we just refreshed the page for this. Right. It was uh, Cavern of Souls. Yeah. <laughs> Cavern's Grave. Cavern not for limited. Grave. Funny enough, but Cavern's Grave. Uh, yeah, it's not. No, you know. Limited. Yeah. I mean, unless you just happen to get a bunch of like one singular thing, but I really yeah. doubt. That okay. That ever yeah. Happens. Sure. If you draft. Uh, where did slivers get reprinted? Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it would work in Ixalan. That's all I'm saying. That's true. That's true. It would work in Ixalan, probably. That was our segue. Uh, was speaking a good segue. of which, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about first, before we jump into the physical cards, some of the yeah. updates to Ixalan, um, things that the game is updated with, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, not a ton right now, but there was one major rule change, I think. Yeah. Um, and most of you by now should know, but maybe you you're confused about it don't really know uh what it means for magic um but essentially the planeswalker rule change is what we'll call it yep. uh the planeswalker uniqueness change whatever um is going away is disappearing uh with uh jace cunning castaway castaway yeah yeah uh he has a byline not a byline another line subline fuck yeah um. <laughs> legendary planeswalker the wizards calls it something and i don't i don't remember what 
I, I, it might be type line. I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> legendary planeswalker dash Drakes. Yeah. Uh, so first thing to note, obviously, he's still a type. Mm -hmm. Jace. He's still a Jace planeswalker. However, he's now legendary. With this rules change, every planeswalker ever printed is now printed with legendary planeswalker. Yeah. So your um, <clears throat> Vraska from the past. Vraska the... Mm, Unseen? Yeah, I think so. Uh, she's a legendary planeswalker. Yep. Even though it doesn't say it on the card, she's legendary now. So what does that mean? Essentially, I can cast one Varaska the Unseen. Mm -hmm. I can cast a second one, but only one of them will stay. Yes. Because of the legendary rule, where only one copy of that permanent can stay on the field. Uh, now, the correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. You have to choose and yes. sack one of them. You do. Is that correct? So what? Yes. What this opens up you, you being able to do is you have a Vraska, say, on the field. Mm. You blow up a permanent or do something like that. You cast the second Vraska, sacking the first one, and then you get another ability off of it. Um, obviously, that's yeah, not ideal, but that, that interaction could happen. Sure, sure. Yeah, that can happen. Couldn't um, happen before. Yeah, and people have done things like this with uh, legendary creatures, mm -hmm. of course. Um, however, the big change, and this is an interesting one for balance, um, yeah. The Planeswalker uniqueness, quote-unquote, rule is gone. So that means I can cast Jace Cunning Castaway and Jace Architect of Thought. You can have them both on the field at the same time It'd be now. completely fine. Yep. Um, so for for anybody who likes to run multiple mm -hmm. Lilianas, which is very common in modern right now, uh, Liliana yeah. the Last Hope and Liliana of the Veil, both of which are very playable, mm -hmm. you can play both of them at the exact yep. same time. Yep. Um, Before they no you longer, cannot. yeah, they no longer cancel each other. You can't, right. you can't do that. And so. it made perfect sense before. Yeah, Liliana's a character of magic. There is only one of her. Yeah, you, you can only control one of her. That's where I kind of, I like, I don't take huge issue with this on the end of like playability and sure. like for gameplay's sake. Like, I think it's fine. I, it doesn't mean too much for me. Okay. However, for like just making sense, like. To be able to play one Liliana and then play a different Liliana, like it just seems a little weird, right? Like it does. Um, I, I don't know. It just feels a little odd to me. I don't. I mean, I'm not against the rule change by any means. It just sure. seems a little weird. I don't think I am either. Uh, my big question is just why. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was a problem. I didn't think it was anything people really cared about. Yeah. Planeswalkers being so strong, I thought it just kind of made sense that you need to nerf them a little bit. Yeah. Right. I think so. I mean, the only reason, and this doesn't make sense to me, like, it feels like they just did it to sh sort of shock the market, right? Like, here's this Jace know. that does this cool thing that's never been done before, and we had to make a rule change for it and all this stuff. It's like a hype builder, which is fine, but, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't it know. just doesn't seem I, necessary. I don't think that's their reason, per se, like, to build hype I mean, for this new I mean, it Jace. might not have been the reason, but, like, it sort of feels that way to me. Well, they certainly had to because of Jace's Yeah, ult. because of Jace's effect. His ult says, create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. Right. So, my assumption was they brought this in R&D, create two copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, mm -hmm. then realized, oh, wait, if they're planeswalkers, crap, we can't. That, it feels like a quick fix kind of thing. I don't know. It just feels weird. I love the ultimate ability. I think that makes yeah, like I sense ability... for Jace. I think it's really good flavor. It's a powerful ability. Mm -hmm. It um, is. It's very cool. I think, and but... it's more powerful than just creating, say, like two two pirates or something, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, like you get these card draw guys. Yeah. Um, and and the, the Planeswalker isn't stupid overpowered. Let me scroll back up to it. No, I don't think um, so. Can I zoom in with this? That's... Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> hello <laughs> you're funny. zooming in on one screen and not even touching uh, it. <laughs> so uh his plus one whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player oh thank you <laughs> this turn draw a card then discard a card yes. so looting yeah first plus one is my stays create a 2-2 blue illusion creature token with when this creature becomes a target of a spell or ability no it's just spell sacrifice it <laughs> I mean, yeah, no one's going to do that. That's kind of classic. Yeah, but no, one, no one's going to use that. Probably. No. Well, I uh, actually think that might be usable. I mean, look, a 2 is not When bad, you're trying to but... defend Jace. Okay, but... I mean, yeah, they can eh. kill it, but, like, eh. it, they still had to spend a card on it. Yeah. You know? Eh. Eh. I'm, I think that's doable. The interaction I think is interesting is uh, in Modern with Doubling Season. 
you can theoretically get infinite oh. jaces so if you don't know doubling season is a card that basically doubles the loyalty counters that mm -hmm. comes in on a plane uh, on a planeswalker and jace starts with three so he with doubling season comes in with six mm -hmm. and his ult is minus five True. so what you get what you actually do get to do is just infinitely cast jaces oh. like Seems kind of cool. No, that is true. Um, um, you have so many Jaces to make an army of things yeah. with. Does it not also double the amount of tokens that come into play? Yeah, it does. So you could so get, you get infinite Jaces and then two times yeah. the two twos. Well, and you get two uh, copies of Jace mm -hmm. uh, with the ultimate. So one of those copies can make two more. The other one can make two two twos, and you can basically just continually or you can loot or you can do whatever so like you get an infinite army of two twos and an infinite number of jaces and you can i mean you can do both yeah that's what i'm saying you can do both at the same time which oh. is pretty interesting you said the same thing differently yeah we did like you can that. also loot through your entire deck if that's what you're into if true, you have lab maniac true. out it's worth it oh honestly though yeah lab maniac with jace in doubling season that is now a deck go make that you have to do that main phase though well, yeah. I mean, you have to play Jace main phase, so like. Well, but you could get all this army. Like, you could get the infinite combo of main phase two per se. Oh right? well, yeah. Like, but... if you want the lab maniac when you have to do main phase one, then attack, and get damage through, and then do it. So, well, because... why would you need damage? I'm missing. So, like, if you just lab, if you have lab maniac out, yeah. you do this, and then you loot through your entire deck, and then you loot one more time, you just well, win. I mean, I guess that's true, actually. Because you're forced to draw the card before you discard the card, which means you just win. Well, what I'm saying, like, it, his plus one, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage, so you can't... Oh, I see. Okay. Right? It's not just a looting I get thing. you. I get you. Or you could just... Uh, yeah. You need a battle phase. You're right. So, it's... That kind of sucks. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fair. It's still, it's still good. It's right, because like, what are they going to do? They can't win with damage on the field if they have an army of illusions in front of them. Yeah, probably, yeah. unless they fly. <laughs> um, but like, eh. yeah, unless okay. they have some janky spell that says deal damage to target player based on their. So you could stack the plus ones and then swing in with Lab Maniac mm -hmm. and do it, but like you have to stack it sixty times. Th yeah, theoretically, something like that. Right, yeah, that would be insane. It would be really cool to pull off. It's doable. But like, it's just, I think it's slower it's than you so thought much, it was. Yeah, it's not worth it at all. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know. That's a win, potentially. That seems pretty good to me. But uh, It's a convoluted win. <laughs> but, I mean, you just do the first part, and you're in such a strong position. Yeah, yeah. That's right? true. Right. Infinite Jaces. Exactly. Just win. No, um, no, no. Infinite Tutus. Forget, the, forget Jace. He's not we need infinite answer. Jaces to make the infinite two twos. We're rambling oh, at this point about true. Jace. Yeah. Um, let's move on <laughs> to the rest of the set. Right. Um, so we are not going to go over the entire set. No, not by any means. That'd be crazy. Um, not today. Um, we would like to do a full set review, I guess, at some point. Uh, oh, no, that's the plan. I thought so. Sir? Yeah. Okay. But cool. do you want to talk about that now for a second? There's about an, the set review? There's an asterisk on there. Oh, that it's only going to Patreons? There Patrons, it is. Patreon. We are putting our yeah. first ever set review on Patreon. It will be our first ever content. Are we doing Patreon. it full video or are we doing just audio? Um, That one I think is undecided. Probably just, yeah. I don't know. It might be easier to do audio and then there's, show the cards. There's we'll a, a lot we'll of questions. figure that out and we'll bring it up to you guys and let you know when it's up there. But that is going to be only on Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do want to see our take on the, on the set itself, um, feel free to go over there. You don't have to donate a ton, but we would absolutely encourage you to check it out if you're able. Uh, yes. If you're not, then please don't. You know, it's it's yeah. we just enjoy doing this, and that's why we do it. So we hope you enjoy it, no matter what. Um, but if you feel the notion, you know, by all means, absolutely head over there. We would appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so let's break into the set. Yep. Shall we, Kev? Mm hmm Excellent. It looks sweet. It does look pretty sweet. Um, I really like the flavor. I really like the effects. I think it is, I think it's stronger than Hours of Devastation was. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more polished than Hours of Devastation is. I just love it. Um, cancels in it, so you know it's good. Hey yo. Uh, cancels <laughs> in it. Spell Pierce is in it. Spell Pierce is in it, and I'm excited about it. Duress that. is in it. Although, Spell Pierce, I don't think will be at a premium in this set because, at least in a limited environment, as most limited environments oh, will be, they're right. going to be more creature based. But I do think even in constructed, it's going to be a lot more like aggro to mid range focus. 
Would you agree? Um, yes and no. I think that plenty of things in here synergize well with the other sets that are still in standard. Maybe. Uh, Spell Pierce will still get played. At least it's yeah, I mean it's still going to get played, but it's I just don't know if it's going to be quite as impactful. I do I mean, like the new art though. The new art's sweet. Oh yeah, it's very cool. The art. I'm not upset with any of the art in this set. It's gorgeous. The, the colors, colors are beautiful. I was, um, yeah. It's hugely vibrant mm -hmm. is what I would consider it yeah. to be. They um, are vivid and just warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Um, so yeah, beautiful set, uh, both in design and art, of course. Uh, and I guess that brings up some of my, my favorite cards so far. Cancel. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> spell Pierce. I love Spell Pierce. Um, yeah. One mana counters Premium are always... counter spell. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah. Um, and Spell Pierce is one of the weakest quote unquote uh i mean yeah but even so like, it's like it's one of those things where it sort of feels like a, a it's basically for spike where it's like mm -hmm. sometimes it's the card you need and then other times it's like uh it doesn't really do anything but right when it does work it's amazing um because it is so efficient it's only one mana like to be able to counter any instant or sorcery for one mana it seems pretty good yeah um i really am interested in let me go up here. Well, actually, this card, but we'll we'll skip over that. So this is a big card. Um, growing rights of Itlamok. 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 Okay. Why did I put an R in it? Um, for those of you who probably have already heard about this card and things like that, it's basically a flip Gaia's Cradle, <laughs> but actually a little bit better on the flip. Um, and <clears throat> their only reason being you can tap it for green no matter what. Yep. But you also have the the sort of second ability where you can do the guy's cradle thing where you can tap it for green no matter or for every creature you have. So right. it's like a fixed quote unquote guy's cradle, right? Like well, it's I honestly think it's better. Um when rights comes in, you get its an initial effect. Look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature, put it into your hand. So you kinda get to sift through your library mm -hmm. with it, right? So that's nice. Then it's stipulation flip, but I feel like a lot of the time I'll the reason it's not as good, though, is because you actually have to play it for three mana. Well, here's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's true. Guy's I mean, Cradle's a land. Uh, <laughs> however, it's I... It's clearly not as good, I don't think. Well, I mean, I disagree. I think if I'm playing this, I've already got my four creatures. So, in my mind, I already want to flip it. I mean, that's the goal, yeah. So, I play it for three. Mm -hmm. I've got my three creatures there. I mean, my four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four creatures. I've looked through my deck and found one. Maybe I want to sift through things, and I don't want all these cards. But, like, that's cool. Uh, and then flip it immediately. Plus, Guy's Cradle only taps for green creatures you control, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. I think it's only... I think that's correct. I think you only get mana for green creatures. This just says mana pool for each sure. creature you control. So, automatically, to me, all right, I'm getting more value in a multicolored deck. Mm. And more value in its vanilla form. Even though, sure, you can say it's a three mana land, like that's kind of weird. It is weird. I just think it's a little less restrictive. Um, it's definitely less restrictive. I will one hundred percent agree with you there. You can't um, play turn one though. You, you can't, can't play it turn one. Granted, Cradle isn't actually good turn one because you don't have any creatures out for Cradle. So, exactly. like, I get that, but you also can't play it turn this turn two, which is where Cradle is at its best because you can actually start to to ramp very quickly. Whereas this, you have to wait. At the end, it ends up being basically, if you're not ramping, it's going to be turn four before you have the land side of it because it is at end step that you flip it. And so, like, yeah. you have basically two turns before that where you could play the original guy's cradle and actually get some worth out of it, whereas this you can't. So my opinion is that it's worse. That being said, I, just think there's I still think payoff. it's a really great card. I think maybe sure. the ceiling might be a little bit higher with this as we like to use floor and ceiling analogies. Um, yeah, I do think the ceiling buddy. is higher for this because it does work for every creature and it doesn't have a drawback of if you have no creatures, it's n it's a dead card. Um, mm -hmm. So I like it for that reason. I yeah. do think where this might actually get to see some play, I think it'll probably... People are going to build it in standard. I don't know how good it's going to be in standard because, I mean, I just don't know. Hopefully it'll be good. Um, that being said, Modern Elves would love this card. Yeah, buddy. Um, because... I, I mean, you're going to be able to ramp it out probably turn two easy because you mm -hmm. Elvish Mystic or Lanoir Elves, and then turn three you get to play this out. 
search for another elf that is either a lord or some other just great effect because that's all the elves deck is <laughs> and then you at that point are going to have a few more elves out and just start to ramp and ramp and ramp so i actually really like it in mm -hmm. that uh place uh but that's where i think it's probably going to be at its best um personally yeah i get that um i still maintain in my opinion i think it's better um definitely slower which yeah you know but i think it's great that's the problem um is that do you think that's what you're most excited about um set? that's one of the more interesting cards to me the very top all the way to the top green card <laughs> if you can do this carnage tyrant i think that card is oh, yeah. bomb okay, <laughs> holy crap so, that card's good yeah we'll talk about uh limited for a second uh, <laughs> not even limited i see this as a constructed playable i mean in standard 100 percent construct yeah in standard that's what i'm talking about uh so okay yeah <laughs> then in that case this card's insane. carnage tyrant for six for a seven six already good Wait stop there it. we're good <laughs> carnage tyrant can't be countered that's pretty sweet trample okay that's a little excessive wits sure like a little overpowered right hex proof so you can't target it you can't counter it and you can't really effectively block it so like what the crap that card is amazing i think it's definitely playable in Dang obviously wizards. limited it's definitely constructed playable in standard Dang wizards um i think it's gonna see play in like modern cube or something like that where it's just kind of a silly form not like constructed yeah. modern but like modern cube i could see this in there it'd be hilarious right like i'm just gonna play a carnage I mean, tyrant and do something right like it'd be great uh that's so good <laughs> um yeah no it's it is a super strong card yeah uh if only they hadn't print a set, printed a set last time with like eight either to fix it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are a ton. Uh, there are a lot. That being said, uh, that is a monster. Just a... Super good. Just a flaming beast. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. Uh, any others there you wanted to jump in on? Um, That's actually a good one. So... Uh, this one? No, this one. This one? I like that one. The oh, Honor yeah, Guard. Yeah, yeah. One and a white for a 1 3, and creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Someone say Hate Bears. Yeah, Hate Bears are going to love this. Uh, Snapcaster doesn't do anything anymore. Sorry. Like, it's it's a sideboard card, right? Like, it's not going to be seeing too many main decks, right. I don't think. But I do think this has its place in something like Modern, where you are going to be going up against Snapcaster decks, so you need something like this. And there's other cards that have done this mm -hmm. in the past, but I, mm -hmm. I happen to really like this one. It's got uh, a big butt, but it dies to bolt. Let's talk about other eternal formats for a second. Someone say fish? Yeah. Let's talk about the newest a lot lord. Of fish support. Kopala Warden of Waves. Spells your opponent's cast that target a Murfo you control. Cast cost two more to cast. Abilities your opponents activate that target a Murfo you control cost two more to activate. Yeah. That is swell. That's so good. That is swell. Uh, uh, and that's that's for a two two for three. Yeah uh yeah that's pretty nice um, which as far as creatures go i guess in a fish deck is like at the top end of the curve quote unquote it, i mean but like it's not yeah. out of range right three is fine God, no of course not um, um they play there are certain creatures they play at four because of their do they really yeah Man, it's, it's the one on with fish decks. it's the one with um it's the merfolk that's in the wizard deck the wizard commander deck i can't remember the name you know who i am um you can I'm cast him. You. you can kick him, and if he comes in, he returns. He like bounces a permanent if he comes uh, in. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That one. Yeah. So does you, that actually see constructed play though? Yeah, it's in fish. Like some lists. I was gonna say not all of them. Not, but, it's not like a staple in the deck though, is it? Um, no, but it, it was in the one that we teched. Okay. I mean, I was just wondering. I, I don't yeah. know. So he don't. Like, I don't play fish. Yeah, he don't like fish. I actually don't. I don't like eating fish. Y'all, I heard you don't like fish. Yeah, he said you don't like fish. <laughs> I, I don't like Thank fish. you, disembodied voice. Fish is gross. Except Mahi Mahi. It's fish! I like Mahi Mahi. I don't anyway. like salmon. Anyway. Ooh. Also, it's dolphin fish in the United States of America. The U.S. of America. Well, the I United don't live States there. of A. The United States of A. You heard a. me. Uh, we're in canada now. anyway yes this is gonna be great for fish decks uh yeah, yeah. i don't think you play four necessarily unless two i think you play two yeah that's what i'm thinking um i mean it's although... a legendary creature you don't want yeah dead cards exactly 
but it's a powerful effect. So it I is do think really nice. But I mean, you look at decks. So like, although I guess it. Hmm. Let's look at one of the most powerful formats, something like Vintage. Sure. They play two of, like, Bug Control decks will play two of Leovold or something like that, which is sure. by far one of the most powerful effects in that deck. I mean, come on. Like, you only play two of it. It's a legendary yeah. creature. You can't play too many of them. So I th- I would say two on, like, a really good day, maybe three. But You could sideboard one. I think it'd be okay. Maybe so, yeah. If if you know if you're, you're going up a really right interactive deck, right? like yeah. control deck, Grixis control maybe yeah. something like that. I mean, if you're against something, that's a good point too. This card um, is a little bit interesting, and in that it's really good against certain matchups, and really not all that helpful against some. So like, right. if you're up, if this is like modern fish, right, and you're you have this in your deck, and you're up against ad nauseum why (laughs) like there's literally no reason to have this in your deck because it's just not doing anything it's not pumping your guys it's not actually protecting you against anything but if you are against a grixis control list or something like that death shadow you will want this absolutely i mean 100 percent, you will want this it will do so much work for you yeah um but yeah if i'm wearing my i am murloc shirt and i play this do i count as a merfolk i think so I'll wear a hat. That's too. what it says in the gatherer rule text. Oh yes, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, because it's a, it's official. Yeah, it's a yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So I am Murloc. Any spells you cast that target me cost two more. Okay. <laughs> Any idea? No. <laughs> I don't fine. know what the heck is happening That's anymore. Fine. You who got that out there. What? Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, a card that I like, I think mm. is interesting, Dead Eye Tracker. Uh one one for one black. Oh yeah. Uh with a activated ability, one colorless, one black, tap it, exile two target cards from an opponent's graveyard, Dead Eye Tracker Explorers. Uh Explorers is a new it is new. Yeah. It is a new mechanic. I had to remember. Yeah. There's a card called Explore and an effect now. Uh the effect is cool. <laughs> So you reveal the top card of your library. If it is a land, you put it to your hand. If it's not, you can or you put a plus one plus one counter on the exploring creature, and then you may tuck it at the bottom or keep it on top. So you kind of get to scry. Uh, you put it back or into your graveyard, not on. The oh, bottom. is it in the graveyard? Yeah. Oh, well, even still, that's fine. That's you... actually not a drawback. No. So. <laughs> Sometimes you want that. Yeah. So that's got better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the explore mechanic is sweet. It is uh, a good mechanic. I like it a lot. The ability to take cards from a player's graveyard too is kind of nice. Uh, so I think this is a fine one drop. Um, I don't know. It's got like modern implications, but I think it's too slow for modern. Yeah, I think it's definitely problem. too slow. It's only a one-time activation per turn. Right. And There's so that's that. why I think it's bad. Right. Um, when you still have scavenging ooze to take away things, why would yeah. you play this? Um, uh, and that's the thing. Like, it's really good to remove things from a, an opponent's graveyard, especially yeah. when Death Shadow is so prevalent and things like and Absolutely. Storm is a deck. Absolutely. Um, but it's it is just too slow. It's two cards a turn, mm-hmm. and you may be saying, okay, well, Relic of Progenitus is good. Yeah, but you don't have to sink mana into Relic of Progenitus. Yeah, you and you have the the ability to do the entire graveyard at once if you want to. Right. So uh, yeah. it's just sort of in that middle ground where it's not quite good enough, I would say. Yeah. Um, um, I the thi- explore mechanic is pretty good. I think I it's like interesting. It. And the explore might give it a little more leeway, but I, I don't know. I'm sure that there's a deck it can fit into and make sense, but they're... I think it might hit standard. Oh, it absolutely will. Like, it'll be absolutely. constructed playable in standard. This but... is giving me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, it's fine. Um, it another fun. card I actually really like, and I just saw it down below and I remembered that I liked it, is Entrancing Melody. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. notoriously, gain control effects are hugely popular, especially in limited, but also just in general. Right. Um, this is, I think, one of the cooler ones because it scales. Uh, it's X and two blue for a sorcery gain control of target creature oh, with converted yeah. mana cost X. So you can take anything, right? Like it's really, really good gain control abilities. Uh, usually swing games in your favor if you get it off. And usually, so yes. it, it's being able to just steal a bomb, right? Or being able to steal even just a problematic card on the other side of the field. And now they can't do anything about it. Like that's just hugely, hugely impactful on a board state. And that's why it is so good and limited. So I'm excited to see this because I do think, um, depending on the meta game, how that works out, mm-hmm. if we do see some control lists and things like that, this might be a sideboard card. 
um, against big creature decks and ramp decks and things like that. So I'd be interested sure. to see how that goes. But sure. Yeah. Personal um, favorite. I agree with you. Uh, I think it. I think it's very good. Yeah. Um, there are obviously bombs that you'd like to take away from folks. Uh, it's nice. Um, I want to talk about Fathom Fleet Captain. All right. For a moment. Uh, and again, me. these are just cards that we are excited about that we like mm -hmm. for different reasons. So Fathom Fleet Captain, I think, is a standard and limited star. Uh, it is a 2-1 for one colorless, one black with Menace. It says, whenever Fathom Fleet Captain attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, you may pay to. If you do, create a 2-2 black pirate creature token with Menace. Uh, wow. Yeah. So reason I like this so much, obviously, that is really aggressive early. Yeah. Um, I enjoy that. As you go later into the game, there are other cards that scale off of the amount of pirates you have to have an engine for them. Yep. And to give a menace. Seems pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Um, I really like him for, I already said limited. Um, standard as well for mm -hmm. a pirate tribal if that becomes a thing. Um, I think it will. It will. We'll, it's going to, somebody's we'll going to try. try it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll try. That, and that's the thing. Any new, especially tribal decks, if you try yeah. to build a deck based on one set, it has to contend with the rest of standard, that's fair. which is tricky sometimes. Um, so there are already probably downsides, like mono black zombies, I think might. Although, once this drops, a lot uh, of the zombies yeah. will rotate. So that yeah. might not be true. Ah, moving on. Um, there was one more. Ah, yes, this is the time of the show when I wanted to ask you my question. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. So those of you keeping track, keeping account of the spoilers may have noticed a really sweet, sweet little cantrip in the set. Uh, it's brand new. Kevin, uh, recall for me and the people, what does Serum Visions do? Serum Visions says, uh, first you draw a card and then you Indeed. scry two and it is sorcery speed. Indeed. Uh, Kevin, I'm wondering where you're going with this because I don't actually know the card. Would you be so kind as to describe oh, to me this card? Isn't this was this already a card? Is no. this a reprint? Mm -mm. I think it might be. Uh, I don't think so. Opt one blue for an instant. You get to scry one and then draw a card, um, which I do think is worthwhile. I would play this 100% over Seer and Visions. That was my question. Oh, it is already a card. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think it was. Good Lord. It's now modern legal. No, because it was in... What is that? No, but now it is because Opt is right. being printed. That's right. what I'm saying. Well, color me surprised. It's yeah. from... What set are you? I think I've had this card before. I mean... I don't know what set this is. Why didn't you keep me? Uh, okay. Was it Mirage? I didn't I didn't find it. Okay. I didn't look. I just Googled it. I don't look at the Gatherer. Maybe I should have. It's a really good card. I'm happy to see this because I yeah. will play this over Serum Visions. Yeah, for I, two reasons. One, you get the scry first, obvious. Right. Yeah, you scry one less, but to do it first means so much more. Um, and it's instant speed. <laughs> like, do it anytime you want. Yeah, that's what so I love. So much better. Uh, cantrips at instant speed. Thank you. That's why Think Twice is being played. And yeah. Think Twice is actually pretty good. I like Think Twice. I don't know if I like it more. I guess I, I like it more than Serum Visions for the fact that it's instant speed, but it does cost more. But you True. get to flash it back, and that's kind of yeah. cool. Uh, off topic a little bit. But... Do you draw one card with Think Twice, or is it two? Yeah, it's just draw a card. One. Um, mm. For two, you get to draw a card, and then for three, you get to flash it back, right. I think. Um, but it is an instant speed, which I personally enjoy. I mean, it depends on the deck. If you're running, if it's a combo deck, you run Serum Visions. If it's a control deck, you can get away with Think Twice, but um, that's just personal opinion. Yeah, that's fine. That's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't downplay the ability to do something at any time yeah instant uh is very strong it's hugely strong um briefly there's there's plenty more to get into this set but oh, we, yeah. we will we'll do, get into it we'll this is first that. look kind of thing right um we always with any new set we're gonna do our sort of like <clears throat> half box sealed thing <clears throat> where we get to play through of some course. of the cards and then we actually get to talk about it firsthand and we're also going to talk a little bit more about some of the all-stars that we find and of course um uh, things like that before we get to new Nebraska, i want to talk about your uh two new uh commanders Admiral Beckett Brass, yeah, rounding out the uh, pirates as your pirate commander. I like it. And Gishath, so this guy is Avatar. a massive, massive bomb. Holy crap! For we'll talk about him first. Yeah, the seven six for eight, five colorless, one red, one green, one white. 
With Trample, Vigilance, and Haste, whenever <laughs> he deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. Put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them. Where, Kevin? Onto the battlefield. And the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh my gosh. Holy snot. First of all, he has Haste and Vigilance. Could you imagine? Hold as on, soon as you on, play him, on. you get to do it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Finding yes. this guy? Carnage Tyrant? Off yeah, of him. buddy. Holy crap, that card's good. Imagine him with Double Strike. Oh my you God. get the trigger twice and double the damage. Whew, how good if, is that? Okay, if there's a dinosaur that gives other dinosaurs haste, <laughs> that just gets insane. God, that's so yeah. good. Not to be outdone, though, Admiral Beckett Brass has something to say. He's a four drop. One Carlos for Grixis. Blue, black, and red. Mm -hmm. Other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. All right. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent control by a player who has dealt damage, dealt combat damage, by three or more pirates this turn. That's okay. It's, it's not bad. It's less exciting, but it's good. Yes, but I think that you can win more games with that. It's more, like, viable, right? Like, yes. I mean, you're going to get to play him, so, like, True. that's that's sort of the downside. Uh, yeah, you definitely <laughs> you get to play him. Um, I think there are plenty of times, if you want three other soul rings in your match, just attack your friends <laughs> take their soul rings yeah why not it's fine uh yeah i think that gives you way more options yeah i like sure. i like brass a lot more i honestly i was about to say you might see him in i'm not even sure mm, no. yeah uh he is outstanding though for commander yeah definitely um okay those new Vraska. shout out to the commander players yeah new Vraska. um little disappointed yeah not gonna lie so okay it's for a black and a green for a six loyalty planeswalker which is a lot right like mm -hmm. six loyalty counters is good sort of it's a six cost though that's too much um it's plus two create a two two black pirate creature token with menace decent uh minus three destroy target artifact creature or enchantment and then create a uh treasure artifact token that you can tap to add one mana to any color you sack it and tap it not in that order and then minus 10, uh, targets, target player's life total becomes one. I mean, I don't really like it. Is that, is I, that bad? Not necessarily. So this is a really strong Planeswalker. Um, you had Elspeth was six, I believe. In Elspeth Theris. was six. I, I think this is better than Elspeth. Um, no way. Yeah, definitely. No way. Definitely. Mm -mm. Come in, blow up a thing, and you get a little ramper. I don't think so. Also, by the way, your life total is one. You're never going to get to the ult. Well, she protects herself. You might. Uh -uh. Two turns away, dude. I don't think so. You have to play her late game because Unless it's a six Unless you ramp, shot. dude. Really? Come here. I mean... Absolutely. This no. is this is a card for a funky ramp deck. I sure. mean, for a funky ramp deck, maybe, but that's not going to be the most viable thing I, in the world. I think she's better than Elspeth. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's... Not look on up anyway. Yeah, definitely. Her token no. is better, first off. Yeah, her token's better, but you only get one of them. You get three with Elspeth. That doesn't really matter. That matters so much. Not if, Elspeth is not better. Not with Trample. <laughs> Elspeth is better. Uh, Wrong one. Elspeth, Sun's Champion? Was that yeah, the one? Yeah, yeah. It's better, I'm telling you. Let's look her up here. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, put three uh, one one white soldier creature tokens on the battlefield. That's good. Her minus three destroy all creatures with power four or greater. So, what do you mean? So, are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. So, dude, that's super good. So many times you're not gonna lose to creatures with power four or greater. That I is would very disagree. That's very good. But let's say there's a problem problem permanent you need to blow up. Artifact creature enchantment. All right, that covers most things. Braska I, comes in and blows it up for you. There you go. I'm, is there an enchantment combo Elspeth piece? I think Elspeth is definitely better. And I then, don't think there's And a then question. her ult, which is minus seven. By the way, she takes so much longer to get to that. You get an emblem with creatures you, don't you control. You care about get getting two, to the emblem. Flying. Why not? Why would you, you... Okay, Elspeth is played in control decks, meaning you control the game until you play her as your bomb, then spread out a bunch of 1-1s one and just win. Or, if they are a big ramp creature deck, you blow up all their stuff, then do the 1-1s one and win. That's how it works. Look, that's fine. That's I'm not, good. I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> I'm saying she's better. 
I don't think Vraska is better. I think she's definitely better. I definitely don't. Firstly, her aggro works a lot better with her token. Her she's... aggro on turn six. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I can easily I can easily make some kind of control deck to work with Vraska. And she's my big bomb. I control the game, and then I play her, and then I win. I don't think so. You've got the same argument. Definitely. It's Definitely. not as good. I'm telling you, it's not as good. I promise you, that will not see as much play as Elspeth has. What? Are there modern decks that are playing Elspeth? A few. It's not... She's used as a bomb in occasional decks, but it's not by any means a huge, huge thing. Yeah, because I've not ever seen I've seen her occasionally, deck. but it's it's not a lot. I've not. And I'm not saying Vraska hits modern. She definitely does not hit modern. I'm not saying Vraska hits modern, but... There's no way. She... That's a bigger impact. Target player's life total becomes one. That's pretty good. It's not as good as her first one, where you create three assassin tokens that have, like, player death touch, basically. Yeah, her first... I. Th you think the original Vraska is better than Elspeth? I think... Better By than extension? Is that what you're saying? Uh, because you're saying original one? Vraska is better than this one true i am so by extension you're saying that that one is better than elspeth maybe it comes in at five and she protects herself too giving herself like death touch basically so they came out roughly around the same time yeah which saw play are okay as someone who didn't play standard when Vraska was i did printed, play standard as someone who didn't play much standard when Vraska was printed really yeah no all right Vraska was absolutely played when she was printed absolutely what deck ran Vraska? oh my god there was plenty of golgari decks that ran Vraska. there was competitively of... viable standard decks yeah really yeah i would really doubt that you're gonna have to do some research maybe buddy. so but i know like El uh esper control definitely played look Elspeth. esper control was just the best deck at the time it got because all the things partially because of elspeth uh okay it was because of uh, it was like the best bomb what's her name ashiok Ash Ashiok. A lot of them off. didn't run Ashiok. Ashiok's a monster. I know. I agree. It but got, I'm saying a lot of them didn't run Ashiok. It got Blood Baron. It got Whip. It just got everything. It was Including the best Elspeth. <laughs> Elspeth helped. This is not as good, though. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think Elspeth's better. Electric Maybe that'll be our question of the week. Electric makes it useless, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. Because Electric is only a one-time thing, and you can... You can reuse the ability on Elspeth. And then I'll just go and kill her. She's only at five. Like, Vraska gets pumped. Like, if this was a plus one ability, probably not. But it's plus two. She's two I'm away from that you. crazy ult. Let's say I can protect her, hypothetically. Hypothetically, I can protect Vraska until okay. she ults. How good is that? Yeah, hypothetically, it's great. I'm just saying. I don't think it's as good as Everything Elspeth. we talk about is hypothetical, <laughs> It is. Hypothetically, yes. you control the game until you cast Elspeth. Hypothetically, you I can cast her When you build a deck to do that, yeah, you do that. Well, I don't think you do that with Vraska. What? All I need to pack in is Turbo Fox. <laughs> Enough for All right, Parks. I'm just saying, if you want to do it, you can do it. Right? I don't think it'll be viable. Not past standard? God, not past standard. This no, is definitely not past standard, this is but I don't even think it'll be all that exciting in standard i don't think I'll i didn't think elspeth play. was either she was just solid and well-rounded elspeth was amazing in standard <laughs> all right <laughs> uh we're gonna open our packs here real soon uh well i am kevin and elspeth are gonna go find a room <laughs> uh uh you can have raska if you're if we're going on that route <laughs> i am a married man sir <laughs> oh that's funny i claim no queen but my own all right we're gonna open our packs Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell Before Kevin if he's wrong. Before we open our packs. I wasn't done, sir. Leave a comment. I'm now telling I'm done. you, Elspeth is Now better. I'm done. Question of the week before we oh, get into our packs. Yes. Uh, the question of the week last week was, what did you think about Iconic Masters? If you watched our past episode, um, we decided whether or not we thought it was iconic or not. At the time of recording, uh, the full set had not been spoiled. However, mm. before we actually published the video... Uh, it was fully fully spoiled, so we did know the whole set at the time of it actually being published. Our argument still holds up the exact same way. Right. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in our opinions on it, I would suggest going and watching the episode 60 of our podcast. But the question basically was, do you think it's iconic? And I think it was almost unanimous yeah. that, uh, no, it's not really that iconic. I mean, there's a few mm -hmm. iconic cards, but no, it's really not. 
Um, one person said they believe it is iconic and then followed it up by stating how many of the good rares are in it. And I agree with him. I think the rares are good um, and the mythics are pretty good. But like as a as a full set, I don't feel it's very iconic. So. Yeah. The argument there, I guess, against that is good cards aren't necessarily iconic. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, sure, there are great cards in there, but how many of us have really played with Mana Drain? Like, well, I think Mana Drain is iconic, but like, but like, where do you see it? Vintage, vintage, which is period. That's like right. I mean, that's that cuts out a lot of the people, but like precisely. I'm more focusing on like, what was the card that we saw that killed a flyer? I don't remember the name, but it like destroyed a flyer and you drew a card. It wasn't plummet. It was like wit. It was the card grasp, we thought maybe? should have been plummet, but wasn't. Maybe it was, spider grasp. No, it was some R to R card. Yeah. Um with the big spider. I don't remember. It was it, spider grass is a uh, buff effect. But anyway, it was just through and through sure? it didn't feel all that iconic. Yeah, no, pretty positive. I agree. Um, um so that was just our opinion. Obviously, if you have a differing opinion or if you agree with us, let us know. But that was just sort of our take on it. And again, you can if you want the full details of what we thought, go watch that episode. Yeah. Um but yeah, that was our thoughts. I'm gonna so, find it, I'm curious. Are you really? Yeah, I want to see what it is. <laughs> there it is. Aerial predation. Yeah. Destroy a target creature with flying, <laughs> you gain two life. Like, why not put plummet? Yeah, not? plummet just sounds better anyway. And it's one yeah. word. Is it a full set now? It is a full set now. Oh, man. I don't know. It's not all that iconic. I mean, it's a good oh, set. It's not iconic. Um, this <laughs> week's question of the week was going to be, what is your? what do you think is the best overall set of all time? Um... That being said, do no, you think we should do that. Vraska versus Elspeth? No, let's keep that. That's way more interesting. <laughs> All right. So if you have a favorite set or what you think is the best set, not necessarily your favorite, but what you think is the oh, best well, that set overall, um, huh. let us know. We want to know. We will have it. It'll already be posted somewhere. Um, so just comment on that or comment on the video and we will check it out. Hmm. What you looking at? I'm thinking. What's the best set? I think I have a guess as to what's the best set. But I mean, mine has to be Innistrad, not to sway anyone's, but Innistrad was the best set for me. <sighs> yeah, I kind of think Innistrad's the best. Set. It perfected limited, right? It was real good. It was real good. Um, that being said, prove us wrong. Let us know what you think. We will tally these. I know we haven't been doing that for the latest ones because we've sort of been doing what's your favorite kind of thing. But on this one, we'll start to actually tally them back. So we'll see who wins. Um. But yes, guys, moving into our Cracker Packs. These are always sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. We suggest you go check them out. Uh, they've been supporting us quite a lot recently uh, and doing a lot of things for us, so we really do appreciate it. So we we promised we'd send you guys there. So I'm gonna need you to need you to go there. Um, please do. Grand please Slam's do. Great. Seriously though, they are fantastic. Um, and as always, we do have our goal cards, which mine is Frank Sanity. What's yours? It's still uh, the freaking... Uh, Torment of Buttfire? Yep, Torment of Booty Fire. <laughs> it is not good. Yeah. I mean, I like it, but it's not that good. I do too. Um, hmm. Oh, I didn't get mine, but I got a way better card. Uh, I got the Scarab God. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> yeah. No, he's really good. Um, is he the one that's not great in Limited, though? Hold on. Um, I mean, it's not... Perfect. Eh. I feel like you could get him working, and he probably yeah. would be my first pick. Oh, heck um, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, I have an Oasis Ritualist, but in a strategic planning. Woo. But yeah, I would definitely pick the Scarab God. Yeah, and I've really only got Angel of Condemnation as my rare. Um, although there's Wretched Camel to work with all those deserts that I love. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, Angel, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Thorn Moloch is the only other one that I would pick. Thor Moloch being the 2 2 with prowess and Oh, first yeah, yeah. That tanking. one's pretty good. Yeah. I like Inferno Jet, not as a first pick, but I like it. No, I actually do too. And uh, actually, the, the what is it? Bitterbow Sharpshooters. Bitterbow Sharpshooters is a really good, like, sort of filler top end for green. Yeah, that's true. Four um, fours. Yeah. That's nice. Pretty solid. Guys, one last thing. Uh, again, thank you to Grand Slam for all that. But we also have one giveaway going on right now. All you have to do to take part in the giveaway is subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah. And don't worry if you are already subscribed. All you actually have to do after that is like your favorite video. 
Doesn't matter what one it is. We've got like a hundred and something of them. Yeah, up. there's a bunch. So pick your favorite, and we will see it, and we will add you to the list. Um, but in that giveaway, basically what we've got is an Ultimate Guard white deck box. Um, KMC Super Sleeves, orange. Uh, I really like these sleeves, personally. Yeah, they're, they are fantastic They're sleeves. really, really good. You guys are stuck on Dragon Shield. Change your these ways. These are really good. KMCs are the best. I think they're cheaper, too, right? Uh, I'm not sure. They were like nine something. It's like a forty dollar oh, value. All of this, by the way. Um, we also have three packs of ours ooh. and three packs of Amon Cat. Less ooh. So we are only. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, we are only picking one winner. So make sure you get uh, entered into that. Hey, we yeah. will be picking a winner this Saturday. Um, so it's been, it's it'll go on for a week long in total. We started last Saturday. It'll go until this coming Saturday. So uh, make sure you subscribe and like a video, and you will be entered to win. Yeah, exciting. I really like this stuff. I feel like this is like super good value. So if you don't I do subscribe, I just wonder what's wrong with you. Bummed I can't enter. Dang. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> just kidding. You yes. are your personal channel is subscribed to. That's true. It I is. think mine is too. It is because we needed entered, to bump relax. up our subscriber base, so we added ourselves. I, sometimes I watch our videos. I actually, do watch our videos just to like, because we're so young into this YouTube game. Yeah, we've caught all right. A little behind the scenes here. We've caught so <laughs> many mistakes. <laughs> it's probably watching our videos, being yeah. like, "Hey, our audio sucks." <laughs> yeah, we've definitely caught a lot of mistakes. Um, oh, okay. A few people have caught our mistakes, which is a little embarrassing. But yeah. At the same time, this is meant to just be a fun thing anyway, so it's fine. if it's, it's fine. not perfect, that sucks. Um, um, also, I do want to mention before we go really quickly, we um, I recently bought a collection, and I don't know mm -hmm. if it's going up before this video is published or not, but it'll be up probably sometime this week. Eventually. Um, we will have a collection video that I opened up uh, on, the video, on the channel, excuse me, we also have the Cracker Packs that we've been doing and um, our gaming, our little game that we did. Uh, I don't know if that's up yet or not oh, yeah. either, but that one's pretty fun. <laughs> it was a good time. That was pretty good. Uh, next week, you have to oh, come up will... with some questions. Oh, I've already got some, buddy. Oh, good. Um, anything else, though, that we wanted to mention? I think that's it, right? Yeah, just quickly comment or instant message us uh, who's better. Elspeth. Elspeth or New Vraska. Did I say Elspeth was bad? I'm going to say you did for dramatic effect. I did not. I don't think I did. And no, I, I, don't and think I you never did. would. She's great. Elspeth is great. She's great. Elspeth is better, better than Vraska. I think she is, personally. But yeah. She was maybe for the time. I think if they were in the same set, I would much rather play Elspeth. I would not. I mean, that's fine. But I, I think that's. <laughs> Guys, thank you for for watching this episode, <laughs> hanging out with uh, us, enjoying this, our first look into Ixalan. Um, obviously, we're just kind of picketing and choosing cards at this point. We're picketing and choosing. <laughs> picketing and choosing. Um, but stay tuned because we will do a full set review again on Patreon, and we'll also do our actual first look episode uh, as soon as the set drops. So that'll yes. be coming within the next like two weeks something like that mm -hmm. um, very soon so yeah get excited about that i'm excited for some new cracker packs because ours is it's been a few hours since we've had a new set so <sighs> oh hours yeah uh compose How i was so excited for it i was gonna say composing a poem for hours the title is what could have been <laughs> um my loot <laughs> <laughs> oh things that drag on hours of devastation um but and yes. this podcast. <laughs> so hey, guys. guys, thank you so much. We are going to get the heck out of here because we've been dragging on too long. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Do we have outro music? No. <laughs>